React Native push notifications are the single most annoying thing I've ever tried to set up. Everything from reinstalling Git for the latest version, blowing up my computer for Cocoa Pods, buying an Apple developer subscription, and it still doesn't work. That's the worst part. But it works now. Check this out. I type something in the simulator, press enter, and a notification should appear. And that's what I'm going to show you today. How to implement serverless push notifications for React Native using Firebase Cloud Messaging as the backend sort of thing. It's supposed to work on both Android and iOS, but I've only tested it on iOS. Here's what you'll learn in today's lecture. How to convince Apple to let you play with push notifications. How to set up Firebase Native SDK with your project so that it doesn't blow up React Native how to set up Firebase and your Apple developer account to play together, how to use Firebase Cloud Functions to trigger push notifications, and isn't that enough? Okay, the first thing you need is an Apple developer account. It lets you run your code on devices, push it to the App Store, enable push notifications, and pretty much anything a little advanced or proprietary needs an Apple developer account. The easiest way to get one of those is through Xcode. You start by opening your project, and we're going to need this a lot today. You find your project, go into the iOS folder, and open your project name dot Xcode proj. Once it loads up, you go into uh, your project name, targets, you have to click targets, and then here where it says team, you select your team. If you if you don't have a developer account yet, this is going to give you options to create a new one. So you sign in with your Apple ID, which I hope you have. And after you do that, there will be a few clicks. And um, if you're making a new developer account, you will eventually come to this page, except that instead of the certificates and iTunes connect buttons, you're going to have a giant buy button that takes about $100 away from you. And then you can do everything. The next thing you need are two certificates. You need one to allow you to run your apps on a device and another to enable push notifications. You have to open your Keychain app on your computer, go to Certificate Assistant and request a certificate from a certificate authority. Uh, click Save to Disk. Just use the default name, that's fine. And on the generate certificate, you then choose that file and you can download your certificate. It's important that you remember where you save that. With the saved certificate file, you should first double click it to install it locally in your keychain. Then you should go to firebase.com and add your app to your Firebase account. To add the app, you click add another app click iOS and then make sure that the bundle identifier in your Xcode and on your uh, Apple developer account is the same as the one you're entering into Firebase. Click register app and we're gonna deal with the config stuff later. Now to add your certificate to Firebase you have to first export it to a P12 uh, say to your desktop and you, you're gonna need a password once you have that you save it go to Firebase click settings on your app click on cloud messaging and then upload the certificate and choose your p12 file the final step to enabling push notifications in your app is going back into Xcode clicking capabilities and enabling push notifications. You should see two, two gray check marks next to the specific framework we're using to do notifications also suggests that we should enable keychain sharing and background modes where we should enable remote notifications and background fetch. Now in theory, we should be able to connect our phone, select it as a device and then click play. Once everything finishes compiling, there should be an, an app running on my phone. So let's see. Mm, 
and there you go an app running on a phone that took a really long time and now comes the fun part adding Firebase native SDK to your Xcode project without Cocoa Pods because no matter what any readme out there tells you Cocoa Pods and React Native don't actually like each other and your app will explode and yes you need the native SDK as well as the web SDK. The native SDK gets the push notification. The web SDK is what you use to then talk to Firebase from your JavaScript code. Start by downloading the SDK from Firebase's documentation. Then you open the, f the folder it gives you and you're gonna need two frameworks. The Firebase Analytics Framework and the Firebase Messaging Framework. The way you install them is by drag and dropping them into your Xcode project. Every time you do that, you do you click copy items if needed and finish. And in theory, you should be able to build your app now. And there you go the app runs on a device so those last seven minutes where I was just clicking on buttons and following instructions that took me seven days to figure out maybe I'm just dumb but hopefully that can help you and you can not waste that much time on something as silly as oh yeah I almost forgot you need to add the Google Firebase C list file to your project because that is the configuration you get it from uh, your firebase thing click google service info p list and drag it to your project next to info p list and when that's done you have to import your uh, firebase stuff in the actual app you do that in app delegate h and in app delegate m you're basically copy pasting code from the readme file of react native fcm into your app well it looks like i did something wrong because i'm getting a file not found error not sure exactly what I did wrong, but in general, if you follow those steps, you should be fine. And that's why this is like the hardest thing I've ever done in any sort of configuration for any coding I've ever done. Like this is harder than Webpack, seriously. Right, configuration is fun and all, but let me show you how this actually works once you put it into JavaScript and start using it. That part is actually pretty simple. Well, at least in comparison to what we had before. We have a action called start chatting which first marks the user as authorized because we're calling this action after logging in is done and things like that uh, then it fetches all the messages because we want the user to see a log of messages that currently exist in the dashboard or in the chat room and then we do fcm dot request permissions which opens that pop-up dialogue where users can say whether they allow notifications or not then we get the token. The token is something that you can use to send push notifications to specific users. So it's a good idea to save it in Firebase, but we're ignoring it because there's nothing we, we do with it. We subscribe the user to a topic. This is a good way to send. Basically, it gives you channels. You can think of it as a channel. So right now we only have one chat room, so one channel. And then in fcm.on we have the notification handling function honestly I got this function straight from the documentation for react native FCM because I'm not really sure what it does but apparently 
or rather my understanding is that we need specific sort of notification finishing for iOS. In Android, it's supposed to just work. Now, my favorite part about this project is that there's no server because traditionally the way you would do notifications is that you would have a server listening to Firebase to get new messages. Then it would look at Firebase again to get people who need to receive those messages and send out push notifications via Firebase. But on, I think, March 10th this year, Firebase released a something called Firebase Cloud Functions where we can move all of that and put it in the cloud so that we don't have to think about it. The way that works is that we use JavaScript to define a function, in our case, send new message notification, which listens to write events on our messages list, then gets the value of the last message, which it's going to use to build the notification, uh, builds a basically builds a notification payload and sends it to our secret chat room topic. And the result is that we have notifications firing on our phone.